Once upon a time, the infamous rover Renardo plundered the floating isles. Then his mother called him to her deathbed. Swear to me that you won't die on the gallows. She rasped. Reluctantly, he swore. And he whiled away his days at home with music, cards, and wine. But the emperor had changed. He'd been good once, a shy, almost humble toad. He'd built universities. Then people started whispering about mass graves in the woods, midnight rituals, victims screaming. The Imperial Ravens would round up entire villages, and no one ever returned. The Ravens had come to Ubar scouting for ancient books said to be of great power. But the librarians had hidden the books, so they'd burnt the librarians. The citizens, outraged, had driven them off. The Ravens had come back with drop ships. The kid had fled with one of those books. He was brave and dumb and wanted to join the rebellion. Bernardo had promised his mother he'd protect him. The kid was looking down, watching his city burn. Sorry, kid, Bernardo told the kid. Look, if we give them the book, they'll leave you alone. My mother died for this book! I promised her I'd protect you. Ah, oh, damn it. The kid had run off. With the book, of course. So Bernardo had to run after him. The two ravens were staring at the kid like he was their dinner, which probably was what was in their tiny brains. Hey, Bernardo said. They cocked their heads at him. Pick on someone as ugly as you. Wait, that didn't come out right. For the Emperor! The ravens cawed and rushed at him. <laughs> flew overhead. He hoped they hadn't noticed him. The kid. Oh, right. The gate of heroes. Someone's idea of a joke. Making the Skyship docks a gated community. You needed a hero's sword to open it. And the kid was on the other side of the gate. Who let you through? Promise me you'll take the book to the rebels. Or I'm going to steal your ship. I'm not taking that damn book anywhere. And neither are you. Try and stop me, laughed the kid. I bet you don't even have a hero's sword. And with that, the kid hopped away. Had to hand it to the kid. He was an idiot. But he had guts. Where was Renardo going to get a hero sword? War and wind essence? That sounds about right. I'll need a workshop, though. Perfect. A hero sword. QED. This is what he got for settling down and finding people to care about. The kid's mum had been a swell cook, and she'd laughed at Renato's jokes, even when he didn't know he'd made one. And then the ravens had come to burn her, and she'd made him promise to protect the kid. But she never told him where the book was, just the kid. He came up to a ledge. It was too far to jump. There'd been a bridge here before, hadn't there? And there was Peter, giggling at him. How'd you get across? He asked the kid. Where'd you find a hook? I harped, said the kid. Wise-ass kid. Hey, look out behind you. Cute, said Renato. Ah, oh, ravens.
time to talk some sense into the kid. He took his way across the ledge and chased the kid down. Thing was, he hadn't used his hook since he'd retired. How had he done it? Maybe if he meditated at that altar there, he'd remember his old skills. Starting to come back to him. Something you never completely forgot, like how to freeze time when attacking. The more he fought, the more he'd probably remember. And there was the Farfarer. She was the fastest ship he'd ever known. She could do the Kestra run in 12 furlongs. Oh, so the salesman had told him. And something told him the kid was about to walk into an ambush. Stop! He shouted. I'm not giving you the book, shouted the kid, and took off. No, Peter! But the kid ran for it, and a goggler nailed him with its ivy. The book was unburned. Next to it were the buckles from the kid's shoes and a kid-sized pile of ashes. Damn it, why hadn't he lied and told the kid he'd take the book to the rebels? The kid would be alive now. Really pissed off and betrayed, but alive. Oh, damn it. Renardo picked up the book. He couldn't let the Empire have it now. He was going to have to get it out of there. He'd be a wanted man. Probably have to join the rebellion just to have a place to dock. Well, he'd hated home life anyway. What was the big deal about this book anyway? Maybe he should open it and find out. All that had been years ago. How many? The war was a blur. And now three Raven scout ships were chasing him. Where are you running, rebel? Cored the raven captain over the loud hailer. Renardo could see them cranking up their catapults. Just going out for milk? Renardo yelled back. Where can you run? Laughed the raven horribly. Far behind him, another city was burning. The dark cloud above its island was thousands of Imperial ships. The fleet was doing a thorough job. Take us to the rebel base, and we'll spare your life! It called. The entire jury-rigged rebel fleet was only a few islands to the east. Beyond that were only the pillars of heaven, a sea of endless blood-colored tornadoes. The rebellion was out of time. Unless Renardo could bring a game-changer. Maybe he could. Renardo had found out where he could find the pieces of the Sky Ripper the legendary weapon that had exiled the lost gods. Surely a legendary weapon could win the final battle. On the other hand, his old friend Lupino had sent Renato a desperate message saying he had a brilliant scheme to save the rebellion. If Renato could only rescue him. Renato dived the farfarer towards the abyss. As he felt the heat of the jet stream, the raven ships peeled off, not stable enough to follow him down there. Now it was time to choose. Lapino or the Sky Ripper. Every child knew about the Sky Ripper. The transcendent emperor had buried its pieces. What could have brought them to light? This emperor, Isengrim III, had once been kind, but he'd gone mad. And now he was conducting secret, obscene rituals to bring back the lost gods. Had he, somehow, summoned the long-lost components of the legendary weapon out of the deep places of the Earth? It was more than Renardo could fathom. But if he could find a legendary weapon, he would use it. As he set foot on the island, Renardo could not help but feel a tinge of guilt. He'd left Lapino behind. He hoped the Mad Rabbit had somehow escaped the ravens. He hoped they hadn't eaten him. If they had, he hoped they hadn't eaten him alive. Why had he chosen the Sky Ripper? Renardo never made plans that required constant vigilance. 
He was a hero. He didn't think too much. He just went with his gut and hoped it all worked out. The Sky Ripper was a long shot. He'd have to devote himself to it. No side journeys, no rescuing old friends. That was against his nature. Could he stick with it? Anyone ever tell you you have a lovely eye? No? The people who had built this castle, did they even know what monstrous weapon lay hidden within their walls? The Sky Ripper could destroy anything it touched, or so the legend said. As the Transcendent Emperor had fought the Lost Gods, thousands of thousands had died. But Renato had been through wars. The only merciful war was a short one. ever had. But about what? was a puzzle, it was probably meant to keep people away from something good. There it was. Sky Ripper's armature. The stuff that dreams are made of. Engineer's dreams, anyway. The device was intricate. No one alive had the skill to make a thing like it. How is it part of a weapon at all? He'd have to ask a scientist. But first, he'd get the second piece. Sky Ripper had a heart, a core that had come to rest on the next island. Well, there was another island he could reach. Zenobia had just invaded it with her father's raven battalions. She must be encamped there still. But fighting Zenobia now, that made no sense at all. He'd already sacrificed one friend to get this, this armature, was it? He didn't need to hurry to face her. She would find him. Renato asked himself why he changed course to confront Zenobia. He'd no idea. Sometimes he would just do things and he could never figure out why he'd done them. Usually, they worked out. After all, he was a hero. The truth is, though, he wanted to see her, wasn't it? It had been a dozen years since Swordfu School. He'd followed every rumor about her, every scrap of news. Not that he still loved her. After all, she was his enemy. No, it was solely because, know your enemy. But it would be great to see her, even if they faced off across sword points, as they'd done so many times at school. The world was a less interesting place without her. Gogglers. Renato hated gogglers. It was almost impossible to sneak past them. If one didn't spot you, another one would. Renato wasn't in time. 
entirely sure how he was going to capture Zenobia. She'd be expecting him. And he didn't have Lapino to cook up a clever plan. Why was it again that he hadn't got the core? Renardo slinked through Zenobia's ship, making no sound at all. Where were her guards? Finally, he reached her bedroom. She was curled up on her bed. Oh, he'd forgotten how beautiful she was. How sleek. How soft. He tapped her on the shoulder with his sword. She vanished. And he suddenly noticed he couldn't move except his mouth. In fact... Soon he couldn't keep his mouth shut. He told Zenobia everything. Skyripper, the rebellion plans, even where the secret rebel base was, until he was hoarse. It was some kind of truth spell. A talky, talky, talky truth spell. She called her father by Farspeaker Toad and filled his majesty in. But why didn't he get the core? croaked the fire speaker in something like his majesty's croak because i missed you darling renato grinned he doesn't even know why frowned zenobia <laughs> that makes no sense it, it's a trap shouted the emperor I, I, i'll meet you at the outpost and i'll bring my interrogators hmm. if renato came face to face with the emperor maybe he could assassinate him but maybe it would be smarter uh, and safer to turn Zenobia against her father. You're lying, she said. Somehow you're lying. The spell hadn't worn off yet. He had to tell the truth. The trick was in making sure she wouldn't believe it. The core is perfectly safe, he said. And he tried his hardest to sound sincere. In fact, I almost went to get it myself. Fine, then. Interrogate as it is, she said angrily. I gave you a chance. The Emperor's interrogators were not especially gentle, even by weasel standards. Fortunately, Zenobia had locked him in the guest quarters on her ship, and she'd forgotten it had a toilet that, like all skyship toilets, could be vented into the abyss. This was not the sort of slippery fox he wanted to be. But just as they were about to land, he threw the latch, wrinkled his nose and leapt through the open latrine. It was a short, safe landing. At least this part of the Nexus hadn't changed too much. Zenobia had been taking him to the Imperial outpost. She'd never expect him to go there by himself. Well... Maybe she would. We never knew with her. Who needed bridges, anyway?
Renato knew Zenobia, and Zenobia knew him. She'd suspected a trick. Now he'd vanished. She would probably guess that was his plan all along. Perfect. Maybe she wouldn't use the Sky River. At least not without taking it to the scientists at the observatory first. Meanwhile, the Emperor would be coming to the outpost personally. This could be good. Renardo was face to face with the Emperor's bodyguard. They looked very tough, but the Emperor held them back. Oh, where's my daughter? And how would I know that? Renardo grinned at him. She lured me here so that you could kill me, didn't she? Ah, don't be ridiculous, said Renardo, trying his best to sound convincing. She loves you. Oh, I knew it. The rabbit told me I couldn't trust her. The Emperor hopped out the door. His phalanx of bodyguards retreated carefully. Renato heard someone call, Arrest her! As they left. Well, that's a job well done, thought Renato. Now the fleet would be in all sorts of disarray. But maybe he could find her in the mountains. She always used to go to the mountains to hide from the world. Maybe he could even turn her against her father. Or maybe he could reap the benefits of the chaos he had sown. It was time to report to the Rebel Council, and then launch the attack on a divided and very confused Imperial fleet. Renardo was very proud of himself. He told the Empire everything, but now they didn't believe anything, and it looked like the Emperor didn't trust his daughter anymore either. There were some advantages to having a slippery reputation, weren't there? Renato wondered if he'd really fooled the Empire. He guessed he'd know soon enough. If the skies darkened with a thousand dropships, then he'd know the Empire believed his map of the Rebel base's secret location. They certainly seemed to be looking for it. There were ravens everywhere. But where weren't there ravens these days? There was an inscription on the platform. Balaleka lessons, with an address. Actually, very fine weather, except for the occasional shower of ravens. And no one was burning the ruins down with the mighty power of a god's eye. If the Empire believed anything he'd said, they certainly weren't showing it. These things really slice like ham. stairs so he was close to the rebel base nothing was on fire so far so good
back to him. He wondered what he'd remember next. As he told his hilarious adventures to the Rebel Council, he began to realize they weren't laughing. Just staring at him with those big bug eyes. Zenobia, let you escape? Asked the speaker. How do we know you're not a double agent? Then I wouldn't tell you about her at all. Maybe you're trying to sound like an idiot, so we don't realize how clever you are. Croaked the speaker. No, I promise you, I really am that much of an idiot. Renato was about to say when a half dozen Imperial ships began to bomb the base. He's betrayed us! Croaked the toads, and Renato decided it would be good to be somewhere else. He boarded the Farfarer and got out of there. The wind ruffled Renato's fur the wrong way. So the rebels thought he was lying too? Because a half dozen lousy dropships had probably just tripped over the rebel base? Okay, technically he had betrayed its location, but not willingly. And he'd made up for it, hadn't he? Then something exploded. A cannon shot. The Farfarer plunged out of the clouds. The rebels had hit his ship. As the Farfarer plummeted towards the abyss, he launched himself into the sails of an Imperial ship. The Farfarer was gone. It had been a beautiful ship. And fast. It could do the Kestrel run in 12 furlongs. Or so the salesman had told him. He would show them. He would be the hero of the final battle. They'd know whose side he was on then. That's what it meant to be a hero. To go on fighting, even when both sides were trying to kill you. The portal was heavily guarded. As to go someplace they really didn't want it to go. Renato had always wanted a flying carpet. This was more like a flying table carpet, but it would do. Fighting ravens everywhere, and not a super weapon in sight. No one was summoning giant murder birds out of the clouds. There were no locusts, no rain of fire. Something blew up nearby, and Renato decided it was not time to stop and ponder. Just as well, he liked acting much better than pondering. Just agree to disagree, said Renato. No?
That was always a rush. reached the Emperor's ship, and there he saw a strange sight. Zenobia being led in shackles by Lapino with a squad of ravens. What? Lapino was working with the ravens? Was he some sort of traitor? And the Emperor still thought Zenobia was a traitor. Ooh, Renato felt oddly bad about that. Should he run down there and rescue her? Oh, but she was the enemy. Then he heard a whistling sound. He looked straight up and saw a rebel ship. It was dropping rather large bombs. One of them kept getting bigger as it fell. Huh? Oh. Okay, that was weird. He could have sworn he'd just died. Instead, he was on the Farfarer, sailing away from Ubar. And it was still burning. He'd fled burning Ubar years ago, hadn't he? And now he was back there. Had all those years fighting the Empire been nothing but a vision into the future? A useful vision, if it was true. He'd learned something. Lapino was a traitor. Renato had suspected there was something wrong with the mad rabbit. But now he knew there was malice behind his goofiness.